All right, I'm quite sure I've shown you this, but this is Menu, the one where they landed up here and took a sample. This is what a heart is when you break the plumbing off the top, which comes right off. Right from there, it comes right off. It's just basically glued on there. And here's Psyche, which is another heart in space. They're identical. The valves are here. The the um, tendon is here, and Psyche has this, exactly the same thing, only Psyche got close to something that heated it so hot, it turned it into like a metal asteroid, a metal meteorite, only not deep inside, I'm sure. The surface is smelted, yes, it's kept its structure, it didn't turn into a ball of, of um, metal. And sometimes they will completely, totally turn it, but the blood will still actually be inside, and I can show you that and prove it. But they break off here, and what we're seeing here is these valves. And if you look closely, you're going to see all of the little tweaks coming out of it, which are the, the actual fibers. I've shown this way, 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 way too many times. And this is what Benu looks like to just look at it in space. And they were right there. So these are, these are not artist renditions. This is real. That, my friends, is a tube. And that, my friends, is a tube. And most of these, these little pock marks here are explosions outward from the wet fluids being boiled from, from the light hitting it. This is the tendon that locks the muscle into the heart. I've shown this over and over and over and over. I can't say it too many times. All of these little fibers, you see those? Those are the fibers of the valves, of the heart valve going in. It, it, it can't be denied. They, if they don't have anybody that knows chemistry or biology or physics, or I, I can't believe these people can be not able to understand this. I don't want to call them incompetent, but I mean, what are you going to say? And then you got people like Mikio Kaku talking about the God equation and they, they you know, this body parts in space, Mikio. And here's the proof of it right here is this heart sarcomeres. There's no question they're heart sarcomeres layered by two layers of phosphates, which are phospholipid membranes. Not hard to understand. You see this? This is Benu, which I showed you is a heart. I don't care what anybody says. There's no way to deny it. And they came back. It contains carbon and water and all of the molecules that are in the human body. And it contains sarcomeres, which are muscle, and it contains phosphate layers, which are the membranes. Now, listen to what they have to say. This is NASA spending billions of our dollars. Listen to this. All right, now, you know, I hate to be this way, but I have to be vocal about this. This is over a year ago. They said our labs were ready for whatever Ben you had in store for us, said Vanessa Weich, director of NASA Johnson Space Center. We've had scientists and engineers working side by side for years to develop specialized glove boxes and tools to keep the asteroid material pristine and to curate the samples so research now and deca decades from now <laughs> can study this precious gift from the cosmos. It's a heart. Listen, the high content of carbon or water indicate the building blocks of life on earth may be found in a rock. Everything there is is made out of these building blocks which is called biology. I gotta be honest with you, this is not really good. Listen to this, they got it all figured out. For the next two years, the mission science team will continue characterizing the samples and con conduct the analysis needed to meet the mission's science goals. Well, what do they want to find out? What is out there? What, is it part of life? Yes, it's already done. NASA will preserve at least 70% of the samples of Johnson for further research by scientists worldwide, including future generations of scientists. As part of OSIRIS-REx science program, a cohort of more than 200 scientists around the world will explore the regolith's properties. This is what they brought back, including researchers from many U.S. institutions. NASA partners 
JAXA, Japan Aerospace Ex Exploration Agency, Canadian Space Agency, other scientists from around the world, additional samples will also be loaned later this fall to the Smithsonian Institution, the Space Center at Houston, and the University of Arizona for public display. I've seen them. I know what they are, and you know what they are. They're heart sarcomeres. Okay, here it is right here. There's Bennu. And this is what the heart, this is what a heart looks like. This is this. And that's the core of the heart. And the plumbing is all broken off. And you can see these little valves in here. That's exactly what you see. And then there is some tendon that's also still attached to here. But this gets right down to the muscle banding. Because this, it's one big wrapping of muscle. And it just twists. And that's what gives you your, your heart working. But what they found here is heart sarcomeres. And what is a heart sarcomere? Well, here's one in an actual heart attack victim. Right there, this is what the heart sarcomeres are. This is ripped, you know, torn heart muscle. That's what it's supposed to look like. Those are heart sarcomeres. There's a layer of phospholipids, upper and lower, which turn into phosphates. And the rest is red muscle, basically, is like almost like clay. That's exactly what they say. There it is right there. There's no difference. Zero difference. The top is phospholipids, which is the membrane. The bottom is phospholipids on top of the heart sarcomeres. And they were, wow, phosphate surprise. We never expected to see phosphates, especially in layers, especially around heart sarcomeres. Let's just forget about that. Don't talk to Roger. I, I, I've been trying to get through for over a year to talk to anybody. And they're all we're giving out to everybody. Everybody's going to look at this stuff. Well, I'm looking at it, and you're looking at it. What do you see? I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. <laughs> phosphate layers, phosphate layers, sarcomeres, sarcomeres, a heart, a heart, <laughs> a heart. I mean, that's just what it is. And that stuff breaks right off. And he, I talk to um, autopsy anatomists all the time. And they say, yeah, they, when it comes out, it just basically comes right apart. It just snaps right apart. It falls apart on this one specific line. Right across there. Because this is just all the plumbing. Pops right off, and you have the bucket right here. And you have the, the valves and the little... The everything, everything's there. It's, 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 it, you cannot dispute this. They want to take another two years to study this. We need to study what our universe is literally made of. And when you see this right here, this is where they landed and took the sample off, point of impact. Well, you see this red and the black and the yellow? That's the colors of blood. And you want to see a, what, what an actual mud fossil can preserve as? with the red and the black and the yellow in a heart, which this is. Well, let me show you. All right, you want to see how fabulous mud fossils can preserve? This is the left atrium, and red blood leaked out of a small area where the tube came out of on a mud fossil heart. A friend of mine found this. Unfortunately, he's passed away. It was Phil Harris, fabulous guy, and he found this with the 15-minute challenge. He went out, and he found a rock, and he saw a red spot on it. Let me show you what he did and what he found when he just tapped it with a hammer. It split wide open because that's what they do. They split right on that seam. All right, so Phil finds this rock, and this is the coronary artery, and I believe what he saw was right in this area that red blood leaked out. Now remember this shape, and he taps it here, and the top comes right off. Now watch this. All right, this is just shocker du jour after shocker du jour. Here's Rod's heart. He hits that red spot, and it just cracks right across, and the plumbing comes off. And it's just still wet red blood, and you see the yellow, and it's really yellow, and that would turn black if it was exposed for a longer time. And this is the red. Now, what we're looking at actual red blood. This is the spot he saw, and you see it's a round circle. That's where a tube would have come out. 
and it just sort of leaked a little bit and he saw it and he just went whack and it just split right there just exactly like they say in the autopsy and you can see these are other tubes coming straight up and here's the top he took it off like this and here's the top was already oxidized where's the top here it is now that's the top if you put that back on the other piece these are the tubes and that's the big red block bucket that gives you and that's the one that would turn black and there's the yellow those are the three colors of blood that are the same three colors of the blood where they landed up on Benu, which is right here now I have an asked a, a little meteor right here which also has these same colors it came through space it's small enough that it didn't smell completely but when they do smell completely they just turn into a ball of metal but there's still blood in them just like this one right here you see that there's the blood right here I'm gonna show you a closer shot of it but whatever this was and I think it was probably a liver because I don't that, that's my take on this a liver is primarily just loaded with metals and blood now that's your red blood and that's the vein blood of black blood so here it is closer you see the red it's red blood they could test that I know they can test these things now and there's the black blood that's that's the standard red and black and then yellow is between somewhere it's either the serum or the lymph or whatever it is but it's in the heart so there's no question here it is the yellow and we know the red and the black is there too and that's the top of the heart you put them together you got a heart <laughs> and they split right on that seam and that's the seam right there the top comes off and that's what we see on Benu is this part for down now we spend billions of dollars of, to do this why can't we deal with the truth and instead of saying in two years maybe we can figure out something it's been here for a year before I even hit earth I said that is a heart which you, you can't miss it and it will have blood in it and what you're going to pick up on that, astero on that asteroid from this spot will be some kind of blood now was it red blood was it black blood was it yellow blood it looks like I don't know but it's going to be one of those variations but it doesn't matter because they all have the same basic chemistry in them only this is the different states of oxygenation right that's why they're different colors but they're still going to have the same basic different types of metals in them so there's really no way they can miss analyzing this there's just no way at all and I'm going to show you right now I have a heart right here I mean a, a a lung right here that has these same colors in it which is an asteroid time travel can say this no you cannot reverse time I'm sorry time goes one direction in my mind I could be wrong show me something that went backwards although I, gods they say they can do just about anything now I don't know if that's true or not can they go backwards I don't know that I think may even be not possible for a god who knows now this is what he did he popped it right here and it just split right at the top so we got all the plumbing came this way and the buckets with the blood are at the bottom watch this all right this is the little lung that I have here which is an iron meteorite all right it's a, it's it's not really really transition because it's very small you see my fingertip how small that meteorite is now each one of these little holes up here is an alveoli and they had air and blood in them and they exploded outwards that's that's not caved in now you see this black stuff here I put water on it because water usually brings out some good details and you see all the blood it's everywhere the blood is all in all over these spots now the black let me find a better spot some some cooks off differently in different areas let me see if I can find hold on that should be a good, pretty good spot you can see the white all right here's what happens when bloody stuff really cooks it turns black all right it's just like black on your grill 
these little white fibers are supposed to be completely saturated everywhere on this thing. But most of them burnt off. Almost all of them burnt off. You can see the couple little fibers here. You see the little fibers? There'll be other places you can see them. See the little fibers there? But mostly they're cooked off. And that's, see, this, this is just raw blood. And I know it's blood because I put a catalase, in, I mean uh, hydrogen peroxide on there and it bubbles like crazy. But this is cooked up and the, there's still some white fibers left. And all of the rest is just blood. That's the red and the black of the blood. Now there'd be yellow in here, but y y you only see it when, before it changes color, I guess. I don't know. Because I don't see any yellow in this. Well, you might say, well, yeah, actually, hold on. Hold on, i got to get this in a... I think we got some yellow right here. You got your yellow right here. Hold on a second. Let's turn the lights on. This is where you get, you really need to be able to adjust the light. Here's your yellow right there. Uh, you know, it's, it's red and yellow, whatever you want to see. Now this one here is maybe better. Hold on. You can see there are all the tubes running down into it. I suppose you could see some of that as being yellow-ish. Let's put it this way. There's several different states of transition of oxygen here. There's the red, there's the black, and there's the semi-yellow, there's the fibers. Let me show you what a lung looks like in it when it's pristine, and it has all of its white fibers. You see, that? that's on the, that meteorite that I said is a lung, and that is the spurlock. And that is on that lung, and there's, you see, it? it's a totally different substance than below. And that's what I have found on all the lungs, they latch with this particular latch. And actually, all the body parts. That is a whole new body part that's never been known before. And that latches all the parts. You see my size of my finger compared to there? That latches all the body, body parts to each other. And I have other samples of that. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was the texture of that black and white membrane stuff all over. It should be all over. You see right there? The black and white little bits and pieces, but it's the black the black is cooked red. That was red at one time and now it's black because it just got cooked up and there's just some few fibers left. This is what it would have looked like when it was new. <laughs> this is like a, I mean that's just absolutely flawless. That is completely perfect membrane. Completely perfect membrane, absolutely flawless, and this is saturated with blood right down here, which I took blood out of here and sent it off to be tested, and it is human. And that came from the Great Flood, as flat as a pancake on one side, and I have a bunch of them here, that this is another one, that the pleura has halfway come off, this is pleura they call it, you see it's how it's eroded halfway, that's another lung, flat as a pancake, just like this one, because it died in the Great Flood. MIT says, yes, the oceans boiled. And when they did, they cooked the creatures and they actually boiled the flesh off and left this, which fascia facilitated fossilization. I have, and then this has the spurlock on it as well. Right there is the spurlock that I just showed you on this one that came through space. This is a long, there's no, nobody can deny this. And I can, I'm almost absolutely guarantee you they can get some form of a DNA result out of here. And there, all, the acid, all the meteorites have blood in them. I showed you that. Every single one I have seen. 100%. They have blood in them. Want to see the giant one here? And don't forget, that's, 
That's red blood. Here's a giant one that they took from the Indians, the Native Americans. Somewhere around here. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, here it is right here. That's the Williamette. And right there, there's blood. There's blood right there. That was a huge meteorite. Now, why wouldn't that have exploded into little bits and pieces? I have come to the conclusion that either they're tiny, and when they come through space, they don't have enough friction and, and so forth to cook up enough to totally melt, so they just blanch. However, it's still, it's still turned into um, to iron. It will attract magnets. Hold on. I, and I have a lot of meteorites here. I don't have just one or two. I have a lot of them. You see, it holds on to magnets. It's, it's strong enough that it's, it's in the midst of being turned into really solid iron. That baby there is just basically solid metal, not just iron. They, they, there's, it's all the different me blood metals. Now, so you saw this is a lung. There is no question. It has the spurlock. It has all the alveola. It has the red and the black. It has all the fibers. I just showed you the lungs that have the fibers. That has blood in it. This could be tested. There's no reason that shouldn't be able to be tested. Now, i got to show you something that just absolutely, totally fractured my mind. <laughs> Wait you see this. You see these? They call these laterite rock stone bricks. They're rock. I don't think these are anything other than just actual rocks. They, I don't think they poured these or did anything. They, just, they came out like this, I, although I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something. This is almost identical to my countertops. <laughs> And I found something in my countertops that blew my mind, as I'm going to show you again. You see these? See all these little fibers and, and so forth that are in here? And the different colors? Now, did they pour these and make these? I don't know. That I'm not sure. They call them laterite bricks. But I'm going to show you my countertop. Now, listen, watch this. This is my countertop. All of this stuff is ground-up fashion. That's what the fascia looks like. Remember the lung I showed you? Let me show you again. Remember these white and black and red and all of that. Now, this is primarily white. Primarily white. You don't see any metals in there except that one little piece of metal. All right? And I believe that's some kind of, I'm not sure what it is. But it's the only piece of metal I could find in my whole countertop and I, there's a lot of countertop so what do I take away from that I think somebody ground up the flesh of these gigantic creatures and and dissolved everything out of them which would be most of the red blood would come out the bloods would come out and also the metals would come out and what they would leave is the scraps which are the tendons uh, maybe. I know that this stuff must have come out from some, they, they must have cut my countertop off of some big gigantic piece of um, stone. It's because, you know, it's good, it's good, it's pretty thick and it's, it's hard as hell. And um, this is a real close-up of that shot. That one spot. Now, it's attached to blood. Blood attaches to metals. Nowhere else in the countertop could I find any other metals. I just couldn't find them. So I'm thinking that they dissolved these and cut up all that flesh. Don't forget, the lungs were um, had that same stuff. This is the same stuff. Same, same, same. Only they must have been thicker than hell, and they cut it up and ground it up because there's this ton of blood in here too. The blood has the metals. The metals are in the the um, lungs and the heart. That's where your metals are, and they, they they must have been mining the metals out of there. And this is the leftovers. I can't think of anything else. I can't think of anything else. Now this is remember I showed you this gigantic heart. This is that little tiny hole right there, right right around there. Watch. There it is right there. There's blood there. 
That's the William Mount meteorite. Why doesn't somebody test all this stuff? I've been showing this stuff for years and years. There's just no, no appetite to change the idea of what they have been forcing you to say at your, your, the colleges. And they say you have to have a core, college, core, core degree to get a degree. What, what, what's a core courses? Core curriculum. It means you have to say this is an asteroid. has nothing to do with biology. This is banded iron. has nothing to do with biology. This is... <laughs> you should hear the... It's, it's hysterical, the explanations for stuff like this. They say, oh, this is what they call flat iron. It just happens because of, of wind erosion. <laughs> this, is a, this is a dragon scales. It's absolutely incredible. I show this stuff, I, uh, it's just, it's hard to believe. And this here is just nothing but <laughs> blood coming out of the rocks. It's, it's hysterical. Now, not only that, there's a lot to do to understand about fracking and how this is going to affect the water supply. They don't realize it. They're going to break up all the rocks over here. What happens? It gets it into the aquifer. It moves down layers of fascia and layers of membranes and tubing, which is the biological tubing of these gigantic creatures. And they don't realize this. Now, I had a friend who was with the Corps of Engineers, Army Corps of Engineers, and he did water remediation analysis of why they were getting contaminations in certain places. You could destroy the earth over here and break it all up and have nasty chemicals over here and think, oh, they're contained because you, if you were a mile away, you're okay. Well, they found out, no, that wasn't the case. They come get down into the the layers of the, the membranes or into the blood vessels, whatever it is. Because the blood vessels are huge, they're gigantic in these creatures. Absolutely enormous. Just think of the creatures, the size of them. And they had plumbing in them just like we have. And that plumbing sent the, the, the fluids through the body. Primarily the artery was just wide open. Now the arteries have drained out. They just basically drain out, and you get the, all these caves all over the world. These gigantic caves are primarily arteries, and that's where the water flows through the earth. Leonardo da Vinci drew the same thing. He drew all the pictures of the earth as represented by the body. He was the first one. Leo and I are on the same page on that. So they don't know, you know, and the fracking is a big thing in Pennsylvania, and it's a, you know, it's going to ruin their water supplies. You know, maybe we can get cheap gas, but there's a price to be paid, my friends. And we're expanding our atmosphere so fast that it's nightmarish. And this should be looked at because we might be able to get free energy. We ought to walk around with a lunchbox full of free energy. All it is is taking light which is half black and half white and let's keep the black part here and let the white part come through collect the white part has no weight whatsoever put it in a battery go drive around for the rest of your life you never even have to pull over or fill up heat your house carry this around in the woods fight fires because we're going to have a hell of a lot of them and in my my area right now in connecticut is on fire and i says no water in sight it's the worst drought i've ever seen and there's a lot of people their wells are going to be run dry very shortly we just looked out there's another couple weeks of zero wells. no no rain whatsoever is going to happen this is uh this is a really terrible situation we got fires all over the place they're going to be burning for they claim until we get some major saturation and they're everywhere in connecticut now i'm in the woods so i'm I'm a little concerned about it myself. They're right down the street from me to have a fire. They say they have it contained. Now, what does that mean? What happens if we get enormously high winds? Well, I don't know. But I'm as prepared as I can be. So anyway, this is what we're going to do is um, just continue on trying to understand our world and the, the reality of our world, not just what they want to tell you in school. The school right now, they're saying, re-examine the whole thing, go into a trade, go to figure out something, how to fix things. You know, and, and how work with your hands, work with your mind. Don't with all this fluff stuff like these science communicators. I want to talk to him. He's talking about string theory and about God and everything else. 
but they won't talk to me. Nobody will talk. He's a God equation. This is Mikio Kaku. I'm going to be on top of him until he communicates with me. He's a science communicator. We got a failure to communicate. We got us here a failure to communicate. So let's get this done and do some communicating. All right, Miko. Let's do it, my friend. Let's talk. Let's do an interview. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why there is no beef. He says, where's the beef? As far as, where's the particles? Where's the particles? I show the particles. There's no question. Of the particles exist, and I show them, and we should be able to harvest them. But I need some communication. All right, love you all. Thanks, Mike.